snow day here. Doesn't matter. We're going down to the gym anyways, guys. Check this out. Home, sweet home. of absolute exhilaration when you got your own place on a snow day <clears throat> so super stoked to have a snow day so just kind of in, celebrating by doing a nice pull workout it's about 50 to 55 yeah. degrees in the gym really not too bad um i yeah. like this weather to work out so i'm going to show you take you through a little bit of a pull workout so to start with back, I'll do some rows. I like to do uh, some sort of incline row movement or prone row movement in uh, most back workouts. So you can see I'm using these most grip handles on this cambered bar, uh, doing two working sets and then one drop set, uh, looking for 10 to 12 to 15 reps-ish on this. Uh, and then I move into uh, a pull-down movement. So this is the Strive Plate Loader Pull-Down. I actually gonna superset from facing in to facing out from an underhand to a neutral grip so I'm actually kneeling in front of the machine uh, you can certainly sit on the machine I like the way the strength curve feels when I kneel in front uh, facing in so the underhand grip is one of my favorites on this machine uh, it feels really good but so I'm looking for about uh, 10 to 15 reps hard hard reps uh, two working sets after a warm-up set uh, on this so you can see another angle here I'm gonna I'm working two hard working sets underhand then I'm gonna superset that to neutral um, and then I'm gonna actually face away from the machine I've just kind of learned uh, sitting in certain positions, I recruit and stimulate different parts of the back. Um, I'm able to stimulate the lats and a little upper back when I lean back a little bit, but facing out uh, really feels different and I really like it on this plate loaded strive pull down. And you can see uh, a little bit from the side angle, you can see the way my elbows come down. I'm actually getting some, some lat recruitment, mostly thoracic lat and a little bit of mid back recruitment because I'm not bringing, and then you can see the neutral grip is really a lot of lat. Um, so just really exhausted after uh, two hard, hard sets of that. And then I'm gonna move on to the to a row movement. So a seat, I like to add a seated row movement in most uh, back workouts. Again, I'm trying to find a balance with not doing too much volume, but just enough volume uh, to just overreach just a little bit. Uh, because of the frequency of the way I'm training, I can't overdo it. So I'm doing two hard working sets on this Magnum seated row. The reverse bands feel really good, but I'm really trying to feel it in that, mostly in the upper back, uh, the underhand grip, then to the neutral grip, and then to the overhand grip. You can kind of see I lean into it a little bit, really trying to feel a little stretch and feel a nice contraction. Um, just a really cool machine uh, for those of you who've used it. Got lots of row machines, but I often return to this one when I'm looking just to stimulate back thickness. You can see a little bit of a stretch there, the overhand. So I, I, I do the mechanical drop set from underhand to neutral to overhand um, because it's kind of easiest to hardest, so, so to speak. And the other thing with every back workout, I like to add a high row movement. I find that's a very underutilized movement to stimulate lat growth and development, particularly the bottom part of the lat. So check this out. This is a Nebula low row I modified. Now it's going to be kind of like my King Fitness uh, super lat machine because I can pull from any different angle. This is the very top angle. I'm using a bench. So I'm super setting from chest supported. Uh, to straight upright. I just love the superset doing this a lot with different cable machines It's one of my favorite back movements just because it's so darn effective So you can get full stretch and then full contraction 
So just a really cool thing. I'll have to highlight, show you the, how I use this, how I modified this machine in another video. But um, again, I like a, a prone row, incline row movement with a pull down movement, with a seated row movement sometimes, and then with a high row movement uh, to hit the back from every angle. Try not to overdo it, but get just enough uh, stimulation. Just an amazing feel on this movement. Uh, really excited about this machine that I modified and all the stuff I can do with it now. I'm going to hit the, the hamstrings and glutes a little. This is the Nautilus T-bar row. I'm doing some stiff-legged deadlifts with my toes elevated on, on a block. I'm using some bands. There's a heavy, heavy band connected to the actual machine that's giving me resistance and then this extra band around my waist that's giving me a peak contraction at the glutes. So... I just find this is a safer way to do it than a barbell, um, and I've got the machine just as well use it. So I'm not a huge fan of uh, traditional deadlifts with this, but because I've had some lower back injuries in the past and some disc issues, uh, I haven't had them for years because I stopped doing that. But doing this on this machine and on my Cinex Hurricane machine are so freaking effective, uh, and I've got some other machines that give me the same hip hinge movement, but. I'm literally just squeezing as hard as I can those glutes and just contracting and throwing my hips forward as hard as I can at the top of the movement to really give me maximum contraction. There is some hamstring recruitment here. It's mostly glute, but there is a little bit of hamstring, uh, which is just an absolutely effective way to do it safely without any lower back issue. Then I'm going to do one more hamstring isolation movement. So I'm doing one strip set uh, on each leg uh, on this Star Trek kneeling leg curl. So Watch the way I do it. I actually superset from my hip and my chest upright to my hip and chest leaning forward. So it actually doubles as a standing leg curl machine if you use it this way. Um, I just find it's very, very effective way to superset um, and really isolate the, the hamstrings well. So you can see in my torso is upright, my chest is upright. So it's literally just like a standing leg curl um, in this position. And then once I do as many reps as I can. I get about 10 reps with each upright and, and then lean forward. I lean forward. And like I said, just one strip set on this was plenty for me to get the needed stimulation without overdoing it. And then I'm just doing one strip set of calves, about six to seven sets total just straight on this uh, Cybex rotary calf. I, I aim for about 20 to 30 reps on the first set and about 15 to 20 reps on each subsequent strip. But uh, just a unique, great rotary movement on this machine. One of my favorite calf machines. I'm just gonna do two hard sets for, for biceps. So I just find sometimes I do too much for arms. I'm trying to find that sweet spot still of just enough volume to overreach a little bit, but not too much, especially with when you're working a muscle three times a week. Um, so this is the Extreme Curl Bar from Watson from the UK on an Atlanta standing preacher. Um, I like keeping my whole body and torso back because it really isolates it. It's making, giving me the most mechanical disadvantage and making the movement harder for me, but it's definitely isolating my biceps. You can see, I think I've got 15 pounds on each side. A little weight goes a long way with this bar, but it's a cool way to hit the top part of the movement and just uh, cause a little bit of a different feel. So I actually superset with my hands close together to my hands wide to hit the short head versus the long head of the biceps. So two sets of this uh, with two drop sets on the last set was plenty for me. Just playing in the snow after, I, I love the snow. I wish we had more snow where we live. We don't get a ton, but we get enough. But uh, I just love doing cold therapy, messing around, playing around, walking around with my shirt outs off for a couple hours outside. <laughs> 